Who was the weakest link in the band Guns N' Roses? Let's talk about it. So when I say Guns N' Roses, I mean the classic Appetite for Destruction lineup of Axl Rose slash Izzy Stradlin, Duff McKagan, and Steven Adler. This is the lineup that broke the band. This is the lineup that everyone probably still thinks of somewhere in the back of their mind when they hear the name Guns N' Roses. And Appetite for Destruction is the best Guns N' Roses album, and it's certainly the biggest one. It's certainly the most signature one, and it's the one that has attained the most iconic status. So, so in the case of Guns N' Roses, unlike most of the bands that have been done in the past, I think you could make a credible case for just about any of the members as being the weakest link. I don't think that the loss of any one member of the classic lineup would have been too awfully devastating to the band, and yet it seems to have been devastating to the band. But without going into the deep history of Guns N' Roses here, which I'm sure you're familiar with, I'm just going to dive in to a member-by-member -member analysis, and then I'm going to give you my decision. So first of all, before I start, I do want to say that, as in the case of any great band, you can always make the case that there is no weakest member. And that is, of course, true for just about any really accomplished band. But the whole point of this game is to pick a weak member even when there isn't one. And that's kind of the point. So if you're wanting to put in the comment section that, well, there is no weakest member, of course there isn't. But there, so here's what I say. Starting with Axl Rose, we have to acknowledge that Axl Rose is not only a really solid front man with his snake dance and his punk inspired persona, but he's also a really good arranger. Now that knowledge wouldn't have been so obvious on the first album not because he didn't have an influence there but because it just wasn't put out into the public that axel rose is this great arranger it really didn't come out until uh use your illusion with november rain and then of course whenever he did get around to putting out chinese democracy so if you drop axel rose out of the band you lose some of his arranging skills the other thing is of course he has this incredible uh, camera friendly, stadium friendly, image friendly persona, and he knows how to work it. He doesn't just have the persona, he knows how to use the persona, whether it's sitting around and causing a riot while he's smoking out of a cigarette holder and drinking champagne, or taking, you know, six or eight years to make an album. He's always cutting the path of the true rock and roll rebel, and I think that that attitude in has a lot to do with the appeal of Guns N' Roses. Now, as far as his singing goes, he's a really interesting combination of a screamer and a singer. So he has like a punk rock style that's mashed up almost with a Freddie Mercury type virtuosity. Now, I'll admit that I personally don't favor Axl Rose as a vocalist, but that doesn't mean that he's not good. That's just my particular opinion. Now, let's move to Slash. Slash, like Axl, was really good at creating an image, and he was really good at using that image. So he took one part Jimmy Page, one part T-Rex, and then his playing is very bluesy, but it's also very heavy, and, and he doesn't tap, he doesn't do the Eddie Van Halen thing, and he doesn't shred, although he comes close to it on something like Anastasia. My point is, on Appetite, he was fitting a perfect role, Paradise City, where you can really feel open air, kind of festival sound, all the way to Welcome to the Jungle, very nitty gritty. So I think that Slash is really adaptable lead guitar player, even though his playing itself is rather confined to specific pentatonic patterns and whatnot. And then you cannot overlook the fact that he has this incredible presence and him along with Axl Rose put a face to the band. So if you took Slash out of Guns N' Roses and, and put someone in there like George Lynch, you might not lose a whole lot in technical ability, but you lose a whole heck of a lot in terms of image. Okay, so Izzy Stradlin. Probably people don't realize that Izzy Stradlin is a really accomplished guitar player. They probably are aware that he wrote a lot of the important songs. Even though Appetite is credited, every song on Appetite is credited to all the members, but everyone knows that Izzy Stradlin was fundamental into the songwriting of the band. But if you drill down, listen to the band on headphones, listen to Appetite on headphones, Izzy is a solid cornerstone rock guitarist in the manner of like a Brad Whitford or even a Keith Richards. He's got a playful side to him, but he also holds the song down really steadily. And that erratic playfulness over that rock solidness is where 
the whole band really starts. It starts from having, it's like a person that the band, I'm saying, is like a person that's so wasted and they're trying to walk up a staircase and they're going every which way and they're almost gonna fall backwards and they're almost gonna fall forwards, but somehow they manage to go upstairs, wasted off their ass and look really good doing it. This is sort of Guns N' Roses in a nutshell and that finding your way drunk up the staircase starts with Izzy Stradlin as, okay, so let's go to Duff McKagan. Duff McKagan is the largest punk rock element of the band, and I don't mean that visually, I mean that sonically. And what I really like about him is his bass tone. There is something in so incredibly cool about his early bass tone that I would like to go in and research what Geary was using and exactly what he was doing. But to me, it always sounded like a very urban sound, like a very uh, city sound, loose, animalistic side to it. So, I mean, it was perfect for Guns N' Roses and perfect perfect for the material that they were doing at the time to where he was playing a basic pattern but he was playing that with uh, a lot of slinkiness to it so there's that element of the way that his bass sounds in the band that I think is really important and very underappreciated now let's go to Steven Adler to me Steven Adler is almost the hookiest side of the band. I know that sounds strange, but Guns N' Roses is particularly an appetite for destruction. Their songs, yeah, they do have some hook to them, but in every single case, the drums accent that hook. So if you talk about um, Paradise City, it's got a signature drum sound to it. R Rocket Queen has a drum hook to it. Welcome to the Jungle has a drum hook to it. He's one of the hookiest drum players ever. And just like Slash and Axel and Duff to some extent, he created also a good persona and a good look for himself. So I think that Steven Adler is a, a really steady and I think that he um, fit in really well with Duff McKagan. So now that I've done my rundown of each of the five members, I'll choose the one I think that probably was the weakest link. So, I'm not going to go with Axel, even though I'm not a big fan of his voice, simply because he was such a huge presence for the band. He defined them. He was the he was a great front man. And I'm not going to go with Slash, because Slash added a much needed dimension of dreamy side and a poetic side to him that matched Axel's lyrics, but didn't sacrifice any, you know, heaviness or toughness to do so and i'm not gonna go with izzy because he was such an important strong, strong songwriter and i also like i said his sound is fundamental to keeping guns and roses on track i think they might have deteriorated a little bit too much into noise without him and and they kind of did if you look at certain songs and so that brings us down to the rhythm section whether it's steven adler or duff mckagan and it's a close call for me, but in the end, I'm gonna have to go with Duff. I'm gonna have to say that Steven Adler's ability to create signature hooks with his drums was a missing element of Guns N' Roses after they lost him that just took away some of their character. I'm not saying that if they would've lost Duff, they wouldn't have lost character. I just think they lost more by losing Steven. So I think Duff is a great bass player and he brought a lot of that punk energy to the band, but I think if I'm pushed to it and I have a gun to my head, he's the one I'm gonna choose as the weakest link. That's what I think, and I'd love to know your thoughts on this issue, so go ahead and comment in the section below. Remember to like and subscribe. Thanks a lot.